welcome to another interview with Bobby Gerhard. This is Full Follow with Justin Presser. How are you, Bobby? I'm fine today. How are you, Justin? I'm doing quite well. So, I let's jump right into it. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, at this point in my life, I'm uh, retired from from actively uh, competing in in uh, in the seat of a race car, but still involved in racing. You know, I run a, a truck dealership and a small used car lot and uh, just keep myself very busy. So, so my next question is, how long were you racing? I started racing in 1977 and raced up until... Uh, 2020. 2020. During, during that time, how many wins did you get? What well, major, stock, your major, major stock car wins nine. Eight at Daytona, one at Talladega. Okay. So, out of those two race crafts, Bobby, um, what was your favorite race to go to Daytona or Talladega? But Daytona naturally. We put a big emphasis on uh preparation for that um you know that race every year and we we, we never used our best car at Talladega. We would always use uh a car that was like a backup to to what we thought was our best car keeping in mind that you know, Daytona was always right around the corner, even though it might have been eight months away. Um, cars don't get built overnight. So um, we we always kept the winning car from Daytona in a position to race again. Although we won that race at Daytona, uh, eight, dip, uh, eight wins, but I believe it was six or seven different cars. So, you know, we were always pushing the envelope forward at the same time, I ended up with a lot of race cars. So tell tell me, um, who who are you who did you look up to in racing, and why? Well, gosh, back back when I started race, first of all, my dad, uh, my dad was uh, was kind of growing up was my hero. He he uh, soldiered through as a you know, as a car owner, very, very uh, uh, independent type race team. Um, but I think, um, I think growing up, I think uh, if I looked up to a couple of people, it would have been uh, Richard Petty and, and Kale. Um, those guys seem to be the benchmark for, you know, uh, competitors, uh, at least when, when, when I was a young, young man. So, Tell, tell my viewers a little bit about your hometown, please. Well, my hometown is uh, Lebanon, PA, uh, population about 30,000. Um, back in the 50s and 60s was a big steel town. Uh, Bethlehem Steel and Lebanon Steel and Alcoa Aluminum and Clearbrooks Brooks and uh, many other steel fabrication facilities. And... Um, you know, through the 80s, it, it, it suffered a lot, and uh, a, a lot of that steel went away. Um, however, now it seems to be have coming back in, in other types of uh, other types of industries. And uh, and although the population has uh, pretty much stayed the same uh, over the years, it's it's look, it's where I call home. It's where I was born and raised. And you know, as a stock car racer with aspirations to do that, I. You know, I'm not going to say I should have moved to Charlotte, but it was uh, a little bit of a disadvantage given the fact that I was 500 miles away from everything. Yeah, so your career in racing, what would you say, uh, what's your favorite race you look back at and say, you know what, I feel really good about that one. You got nine Eight nine wins between 
Daytona and Talladega uh, in the Arca series. That's why uh, that's why I became a fan. I've always been a fan of yours. Watching that series, watching you go at it with those boys, and uh, I guess what is your favorite part about racing professional stop cars? Well, as far as my best, listen, as far as a, my most favorite race, I think uh, you know from an attention standpoint and the the magnitude of it, you know, our last one in two thousand twelve might have been the, the the biggest given the fact that a we started in the last position um, given the fact that our pole position was was disqualified and um, won the race on the last lap um, so it was a pretty big thing to go through um, big emotional swing for everybody including me um, but also one of my favorite races was 2002. Um, I didn't know my dad was in the infield and um, he wouldn't come on the pit road until I was on the racetrack. And, and then of course I didn't, I didn't know he was, uh, he was there until we were headed to victory lane. And that was kind of a special one. Special win, huh? Yeah. Special win. Absolutely. So talk to me about your relationship with your family. Was your family very supportive in your racing and like the fact that they went to every race? You could say you had that special moment with your dad. Was that kind of a father son thing? Or, you know, my dad, after he retired from, uh, from racing, really didn't, didn't have a lot of involvement. Uh, and I can understand why I'm probably almost at that point myself, but, uh, talking about family, my brother, Bill was at every race I, I've ever ran. Um, and he monitored a lot of things and, and called the shots in the pits at all of our, all of our speedway events and, and, uh, was closely involved in the entire race team. So would you say uh, did you look forward to Daytona and Tower Digger every year just because of the magnitude of the races and everything? Well, I think I think as as NASCAR progressed, you know, through the decades, um, you know, Daytona was was the was the spectacle. Um, from a lot of aspects and, and, and still is to, to most degree. So, you know, the cameras are on, let's say brighter and longer at Daytona. So if you are looking to get some exposure and want to get a sponsor, the place to run good is Daytona. So we put a big emphasis on it and it worked for us. Uh, you know, from, from 1999 all the way up until, um, uh, I quit in 2020. We had corporate sponsorship. So, you know, um, being able to to give your sponsors uh, ample television time is really what, what makes the whole thing work. And naturally at Daytona and Talladega, the cameras seem to be shining brighter. Yeah. Well, I hope um, that – thank you for your patience today. Thank you for coming on for Fargo. And, you know, one question I always ask everybody that comes on <laughs> is, is what what do you want people to know you for? Bobby Gerhardt. What does Bobby Gerhardt want to make sure he tells people in racing what to look out for and how they you know, well, I think, look, I think, I think my career, if it stands for anything, um, may, may stand for the simple fact that, you know, look, I started, um, actually started racing with, with a, a group of high school friends of mine that, you know, we sat around and, and put a few hundred dollars together and built, built a 68 Camaro. Uh, that led me to 
to uh, Victor Lane in that year and, and our first track championship. And um, it just springboarded a career uh, that ended up giving me the opportunity and the privilege to race it at some of the biggest racetracks across the country. So if there's a lesson in that, uh, it, it's first of all, starting from the beginning, you know, at, at entry level racetracks, which is very important. And second of all, never losing sight of a dream looking forward and not be afraid to tell people really what your aspirations are. Although it took me maybe 12, 13, 14 years to actually get to Daytona to race another 10 to go to Victor Lane. I think if, uh, I think if I could describe myself as one character, it would be extremely hardworking. All right. Well, thank you for coming on today and thank you for your cooperation in this. And quick, My pleasure to be here, Justin. Thank you. Quick uh, like on this bill if you like this content. And this has been another edition of Full Follow Interviews with Mr. Bobby Gerhardt. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.